The Bearskin Tactical Hoodie has got to be the most hyped piece of outdoor clothing on the internet today. So much so that I was turned off from even considering purchasing one for myself. However, when the company reached out and offered to send me one, I reconsidered my position on this. My thinking was, if it turned out to be half as good as the claims for it are, it might be something worth owning. Well, if you're interested in hearing what I've learned about it, keep watching. All right, before I begin, I want to thank the people at Bearskin Clothing for sending out the Tactical Hoodie 3.0 so that I could share it with you. So what I thought I would start by doing is backing away from the camera, showing you what it looks like on me. I want to talk about the sizing a little bit. I also want to go through all the key features this jacket has to offer. But what I want to do then is bring the jacket in, lay it down on the table, focus the camera down on it so I can go into those features with a little bit more detail and and show you the quality of the construction. All right, let's get started by talking about the size and fit for the Bearskin Tactical Hoodie 3.0. So to begin, I am a size large. I wear a size large shirt, size large jacket, and I'm about 5 foot 10, 185 to 190 pounds. So when Bearskin offered me this jacket or this hoodie, I asked for it in size large. So that's what I have. So I'm just going to give you a 360 degree so you get an idea of what a size large looks like on me. Now, while I have my back to you, I'll just show this to you, and that is the tail of the jacket. It does ride lower than the waist does, and that gives me lots of protection down here over my kidneys and down over my butt. That's a nice feature right there. I'll finish my 360. I am going to talk about the sleeves and the fit of those in a moment, but I just want to point out how I view this jacket and how I plan on using it, because that will also help you in your decision. So for me, this is a mid layer. I'll wear a base layer of some type underneath this. I'll wear this on top of that. And then if it's cold out, I'll wear something on top of this. So this time of year, I reach into my closet and I pull out a wool jacket. It is a Canadian Army wool battle shirt, which is oversized and long-term, long-time viewers of my channel will remember seeing that often. And that still goes on over top of this, not just nicely, perfectly, in fact. And part of that is because of the sleeve fit. So the sleeve itself, is not tight by any means, but snug enough. I have a long sleeve shirt on. I could certainly wear a base layer underneath this, but I couldn't wear another fleece or anything underneath this. But being somewhat snug to my arm, that allows me to get my arms down inside the sleeves of a larger jacket without feeling all constricted and bound up inside. So I think that's great. Now, here's the other thing I'll say. I'm wearing this as a mid-layer for out in the woods primarily, but if you're looking to wear this jacket as something more of a fashion jacket and you want a bit of a slimmer look than what I, what it, how it fits on me, then by all means, size down one size. I could still get away with wearing a size medium hoodie because the sleeves are plenty long enough. I'm not worried about them creeping up my arm with the change in size. But for me, the size large is exactly what I was looking. Not too big and baggy, but not too tight at all. Room enough for even one more layer underneath this beside the base layer. Maybe a fleece, or not a fleece so much as a little puffer vest. I wouldn't, don't think I could get a full puffer jacket on, but a little down vest or synthetic vest of some type could go underneath this. There's enough room in the bottom for doing that. All right, let me move in a little bit closer and we're going to go over some of the key features, at least on the outside of this coat, before I lay it on the table and give you some close-ups. So begin, pockets. So, uh, you know, the bearskin refers to this as a tactical hoodie. I don't know what that means. Certainly an overused term that doesn't have a clear definition. But what I can say is there are a lot of pockets on this jacket. That's probably one of the key features is that there are so many pockets that allow you to place things all over your body securely and quick uh, access to them. So to begin, the primary pockets, I call these, these are the vertical slash pockets down each side, quite deep, quite roomy, nice inside. They have a, a tricot or a nylon mesh inside, so it's nothing catching on it. At the same time though, there is another layer of fleece on the inside of the jacket, and that'll show up when I take this off. So you get double insulation through here. So how big are these pockets? 
from here to here. That's how deep they are, and from the zipper to the midline, of course, as well. Now, the only comment I'll make about this is, is the zipper does run full length, so it comes right down to the bottom of the pocket. If you're going to put anything in here that you can't afford to lose, like your cell phone or whatever it is, your car keys, make sure you just zip it up, because there is the risk that you could drop them out of those pockets. All right, there are more pockets on the outside of this, and we'll start with the ones on the upper arms up here. So there is a pocket here, and this is the same on both sides. This is a big pocket. I can reach in and put my whole hand in there, and it runs from here to here and right back to here. You can see that's a big pocket. This is plenty big for you to put a cell phone in, a notebook in, or just about anything other good size item in size there. I think it's big enough. And that's one of the features on other jackets I find that have those type of pockets are often too small. This is not. This is plenty big. And you can see that there is also the Velcro for a morale patch or an identifying patch here as well on both sides. One more pocket or two more pockets, I guess, on the outside of this jacket. And that is around back, right back here. You can see the zippers. They zip down. This is one large pocket that passes right through, just like a hoodie pocket would normally be on the front. But, you know, I, I've mentioned this when in a jacket that also had pockets like that. It reminds me of the timber cruisers who went out and marked trees for future harvesting. They carried maps in a pocket on the back of their jacket, referred to as a map pocket. But I can also recall my father having a hunting coat that would have a pocket back there, a game pocket. I don't think I'd put game or in back here, but you can certainly put a map, but you can put a whole lot more. And again, it's a double layer of fleece back here. So you've got double the fleece over your kidneys right down to your butt, which is really, you know, a good feature for sure. So those are the pockets on the outside. Now, let me close in and I'll start to show you the pockets on the inside. So right at the top on my left is this double pocket. And what I mean by double pocket, there is a pocket here, it's quite high up, as you can see. This is probably where I'm going to put my glasses, my reading glasses. And there is another zippered pocket, secured pocket right here. So you have that double pocket here, and you have the same combination on each side of the jacket at the bottom. So there's a pocket that runs from here down to the bottom, and a zippered pocket on the front of that. And that's true on both sides of the coat. So lots of pockets. Those pockets are that extra layer of fleece that's inside of these primary pockets. So you can see how they made use of putting extra fleece inside and uh, to double up the fleece and give you, make pockets out of them. All right, so what I want to do now is I have my microphone kind of just hanging loosely around my neck. I'm going to lay it down. I want to make sure you can continue to hear me because I need to put the hoodie up to show you that. So we'll start by throwing the hoodie up over my head. All right, first comment. This hoodie is large, or the hood itself, I should say, is large, plenty big. I've heard comments where people say it's too big. I don't think you can have a hood that is too big, as long as you can draw it back and keep your face exposed or as, as much as you need to. This is big enough that I can wear a beanie or toque or even a ball cap underneath it without it feeling like it's just too tight around me. Now let me finish zippering this all the way up. There is a drawstring on this one side which does allow me, with a cord lock, which does allow me to really snug this down around my face. There's a small visor here on the front. Uh, it's, I guess it is kind of working, but you know, it's take it or leave it. It's there. It's a nice feature. It doesn't make or break the jacket, but it's a nice feature to have as well. While I'm up here at the top, let me show you this. There is a chin guard here where the zipper comes up, so it's protecting your chin against having uh, your chin right against the zipper. Now, the zipper is plastic, and uh, it's not metal, so you don't have to worry about that, but you're not going to be catching your beard in, a, in the zipper as well. But what's most important about this is this flap goes right down the full length of the jacket and is a key component to the wind resistance. We'll talk about that in a moment because that is one of the claims they're saying is windproof, not windproof, but highly wind resistant. I'll say that. And so this storm flap, wind flap, goes all the way the full length of the zipper. Another nice feature before. I think the last thing I can show you before I take the hood off or take the jacket off is the cuffs themselves. Now some of these things are improvements over the original bearskin hoodie, the point or 2.0 and this being the, the 3.0. And, you know, that's a good time to point out, 
Each of the improvements of these successive generations are the result of feedback that people have given Bearskin on the hoodie where it can be improved. This is one of the best Velcro systems I think that you can get on jacket. So it's a nice Velcro system that is rubber on this side, allows you to fold it over and get as snug as you want around there to tighten up on the cuff. You still have some elasticizing here. Again, a key component of keeping you warm because it prevents wind from running up inside yet is easy to operate and get off even with gloves. There's enough of a tab there that with gloves on, I can get a hold of that. It's actually got a little bit of traction. So it's easy to get off or grab a hold of to undo so that you can get it on and off. Even with mitts, I did try this with mitts as well because as you know, sometimes it can be difficult to uh, get a jacket on and off when you got mitts. All right, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about the zippers in a moment. Yes, there is one more thing that I guess I do need to include before I lay the jacket down, and that is the drawstring around the waist. There are cord locks on both sides. You can see the, the bungee or the uh, shock cord right here with cord locks. Another key component of staying warm with this jacket, or any jacket for that matter, is snugging up the waist as snug as you can reasonably get it, again, to prevent air from coming up and rocking in you of heat. That's also part of their wind resistant design for this jacket. Okay, I think I've shown you everything I can while I'm wearing it. I want to close in on the jacket just for a few moments before I give you my experiences wearing it. All right, I just wanted to take a moment to show you a few close-ups of the jacket, and there may be another feature or two that I have not focused in on enough that I want to cover as well. So I think we'll actually start with the zippers themselves. So they are two-way zippers. So let me bring it up. Here is the zipper at the top that I can zip down, but I can also, of course, zip it up from the bottom. Great feature if you're trying to reach something on your belt without having to undo your whole jacket for sure. So let me just take it down from the top. I wanted to show you those inside pockets with a little bit more detail and show you that there is, in fact, a fleece. Well, okay. It's got a nylon material, so it's not actually showing the fleece, but this nylon material is nice. It doesn't snag. It doesn't get all uh, fuzzed up, if you will. But you can see here, that's where the double layer of fleece is. So the back pocket, the inside pockets, are fleece in and of themselves. And that's true in the back here. So here is where that back zippered pockets are. There are the two zippers still open. So this is two layers of fleece thick. Another key feature, the shock cord with... Uh, cord locks on them, just so you can get your fingers on them. There we go. So you can snug that down. That works really well. The zipper pulls themselves, pretty much standard now on good outdoor clothing. Nice, nice uh, and strong, easy to grab onto, even with gloves or mitts on. What else can I show you? All right, let's go to the top. There is the two cord locks right here at the top on the hood to snug it down. Now, I'm going to say this and show it to you at the same time. There is one feature, I think, or one improvement, if there's ever going to be a bearskin tactical hoodie 4.0, then this may be something they want to consider putting in. It, the hood itself is a three-piece hood, so it's not just sewn to mitt. There is a center seam in it, which gives its room as, as well. But there is no adjustment on the back here that would allow you to pull it back and adjust. In other words, pull it back on your head a little bit. It's going to stay forward and a little bit floppy over your face the whole time. Now you can get it snug around your face, but the hood for some people, they may find that just a little bit too big around their face and they can't get it back. Now, Honestly, when I put this on with a toque, uh, that disappeared, that, that floppiness. It seemed to fit, form fit around my head much better. However, if Bearskin is looking for something to do, they could put something back here, like a piece of Velcro or a piece of uh, maybe another bungee cord, run through it like a lot of hoods on outdoor jackets have, just to pull it back from your face a little bit. Let me see anything else I can show you. Fit and finish, double stitch, flat stitched all the way around well stitched everywhere, well finished. Now, here's something I'll point out. So it is 100% polyester. It is assembled in China, but it's been designed in Europe. So yeah, okay, it's, it's made in China. Tell me what isn't these days. Now, a key feature of this jacket, one of their biggest selling points, is the fact that the fleece is about as heavy a fleece as you can purchase anything in today. They re refer to it as 330 GSM polyester fleece, GSM standing for grams per square meter. What does that mean? It means it's a dense, 
heavyweight fleece. It is not windproof, but it is heavy and certainly wind resistant. Now, the only thing I could compare this with is I reached into my closet and pulled out my surplus Canadian military fleece that is, I believe it's still current issue. And this fleece appears to be heavier than the Canadian military. Now, I don't know if you can get a better recommendation of that. That is a dense, heavy fleece. Okay, bearskin logo right down on the waist. Yeah, well constructed. Okay, I think it's time to give you my thoughts on owning and using this jacket. Let's wrap this video up with my experiences wearing this jacket over the last four months. And of course, I'll close up by answering the question, does it live up to the hype? So as I mentioned, I've had this jacket for about four months. I wore it through mid to late fall as an external layer all by itself. But as it got colder now into midwinter, I've been wearing it underneath another jacket and sometimes with a little bit of a puffy vest underneath it itself. Um, it has done a good job of being exactly what I wanted out of it, which was a mid-layer. It is not a year-round standalone jacket, at least for our climate here in Canada. But as a mid-layer, it is second to none. It is the best fleece that I have in my collection. In fact, I wore this out to a couple of sporting goods store here and compared it against jackets of a much higher price from well-known popular brand names and found that the quality of construction, the quality of the fleece in this jacket was at least equal and oftentimes better than those more expensive jackets. But when it came to features, this jacket, that the Bearskin Tactical Hoodie 3.0, had more than all of those other jackets. There was nothing that could compare with it feature-wise. So yeah, I really do think it is that good a fleece jacket. Now, let's talk about a few of the claims. Is it windproof? No, it is not windproof. And I don't think you want it to be windproof because if it was totally windproof, it probably would not breathe. You need your mid-layer to be able to breathe to vent off excess heat. It's highly wind resistant. It did me well into the fall. But once it got into the winter, I needed to wear it under something else. So it is not windproof, wind resistant. A lot of that has, well, yes, the quality of the fleece being very tightly woven, very dense, helps a lot. But so do the other features like the vent or the uh, flap down the center under the zipper, as well as tightening it up around the waist, as well as the wrists. All those features help to make it very wind resistant, but it is not windproof. It is definitely not waterproof. Water resistant, I would even question that. I did get, was out one day, it was drizzly, but not raining, and it was beating up on it, but then again, it was still relatively new. It may well have a DWR or durable water coat repelling on the outside of the fleece right now. If it does, that's gonna wear off over time. I would not expose this to the rain with the expectation of staying dry. I would wear this under something else. And uh, that's just the reality of it. So I think that's a couple of the hype points that it doesn't quite live up to. Value for your money. Yes, as long as you get it on sale. The, re the quoted regular price for this jacket on Bearskin's website is I think inflated, way above what you would pay for any jacket of any material for that matter, except for a good quality wool coat, of course. But when it's on sale, and it almost always is, then it is not only a good value, it's a great value because honestly, as I said, this is the best fleece in my collection. So am I happy I have it? So much so I'm considering buying another one for myself. This is my outdoor jacket in this nice olive green, but it does come in yellow, blue, red. Uh, I don't know if they're, yes, even camouflage. So there's a variety of colors. I think I might get one in a navy blue to wear as my, just an everyday wear jacket throughout the fall here in my urban setting. But for the outdoors, this will remain my mid layer of fleece of choice. This is the one I'll reach for, as, especially as the winter deepens here. Okay, I think I have uh, commented enough on this jacket. I will one last comment, and this is directed to Bearskin. Please drop those commercials. <laughs> they do nothing to entice me to look at your product closer. Uh, honest reviews, hopefully people will see this as an honest review, will do more to convince people that this is worth looking at. Those, some of those ads are truly corny. Now, my daughter says it depends on who you're, who you're trying to target with your marketing, and maybe so. But to me, my age, my demographic, they just turned me off. 
having said that, I'm glad they reached out to me. I'm glad they sent one. I really do like this jacket. Uh, okay, let's close this video. I'm going to put all the specifications for this jacket, all its key features and other information in the video description, as well as links to where you can take another look at it. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.